Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to dissect a disaster. Choose your disaster. You know, there's seems to be unlimited choice these days. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to talk about the debris flow that devastated houses and various parts of of uh, a small town in a region in California and basically what happened is in the spring of 2017 there was excessive rains on on the coast of California and this caused a lot of growth of vegetation shrubs and bushes and small trees and things more than more than usual then in the summer there was the, the drought and heat and the vegetation died, most of it on the slopes of the hills, and therefore the when when there was the strong Santa Ana winds and sparks, there were wildfires, you know, many, many wildfires in in the late summer, um, fall, and it was so hot and dry that this continued, you know, right through into the winter months, into December. In fact, there were major fires, as you know, wildfires in December, um, and these scorched large areas. And then come January, uh, there's very, very, uh, there, there's, there, there's very heavy rains over the burned areas. Now, when you have very hot fires, wildfires, that heat basically bakes the surface of the ground the soil and makes it impermeable to water. So any water falling on that region uh, is repelled from going into the soil. Instead of that, it runs down the slopes and can cause flash floods, mud flows, debris flows. And I'll talk about all those things and I'll talk about the differences. Okay, so this is my Twitter page, Paul H. Beckwith. Um, I have tweeted quite a bit about what's been going on. Okay, so one of my favorite programs, Earth Null School. Google Earth Null School, click Earth in the bottom left corner, brings up these menus. In this case, I chose 3HPA as the overlay, and that's the next, that's the three hour precipitation accumulation. Okay, I cycled back in time to January 8th, 1 p.m., 1 o'clock local time. That would be 1 in the morning. Okay, now you can advance every three hours. Oh, I went to the location of uh, where, where this flooding occurred. Um, now, how did I get that? I go into Google Earth, okay, and this is Google Earth Pro, and Montecito, California, was where most of the damage was. So I just type in Montecito, California here, and I do a search for it. And here we go. Google Earth, it takes us right here and zooms into Montecito. From this, I can get the latitude about 34 point 34 degrees 26 minutes 11.99 degrees north and the longitude 119 degrees roughly you know 37 minutes uh, and so on of the, the longitude okay so from that um, and I can zoom out a little bit just to look at the local terrain and stuff and you can see all of these hills up here and this is a large region where the fire occurred. So the ground is charred, rains fell on this area, ran down in here and caused the problem. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see the islands here, these four islands, five islands. Santa Cruz Island is this one. Montecito is just straight up from there. Okay, so let's, close, let's minimize this now. Okay, so I put in, I move this pointer around to the latitude and longitude of Montecito, and I backed it up to, there's zero inches of rain. If you click on this, you can change the units. 
millimeters, so metric, inches, and so on. You just click on the unit. Okay, so because there's a lot of American viewers, I'll have it in inches here. And now I'm gonna cycle through three hours. Okay, three hours ahead. Okay. If it's not gonna cycle through, I have a problem. Come on, what are you doing to me? Um, hmm. There we go. Okay, so it worked. So this is where we start. Okay, here we go. So we're looking at winds at the surface and three hour precipitation accumulation. So zero inches um, as we go ahead. Okay, 0.3 inches. Keep going, 0.8 inches. So look at this area, Point, 0.07 inches. And we just keep cycling forward, 0.03. So we're, you know, January 8th, 1300 local time. Go through, so it's getting a bit more intense. It's picking up, 0.14 inches. It's still not very heavy rain. Okay, point one, you can see some very heavy areas here. Okay, it's picking up a bit. Some of the blue color is coming in, point one six inches, right? You're looking up here, you're looking at this area here. Okay, we'll go up and here we go, boom. Okay, so this was uh, one o'clock, one in the morning, January 9th. And this is at four in the morning. So the rainfall has really picked up 0.91 inches over that three hour period here. And kaboom, this is when the problem happened. So this fell on the burn scar and uh, just most of it ran off the surface and it caused all these problems. So here's three hours later, this has moved off. We still have lots of rain here. And uh, three hours later, you know, coming 10 in the morning, but most of the rain has stopped. It's picking up again a little bit, and it basically goes to zero, okay? So, okay, so this is Earth Null School. Now, let's just have a look at the, uh, some of where, where these fires were. So, if I click on, if I, if I just go to Google, Im, I Google Google Images, and I did a search here. In this case, I searched for California wildfire map, December 2017. It brings up all of these just images. Click on the image, brings it into focus, expanded it. So here's the fire, the Thomas fire, that applies in this case. You can get a better image of it here, more detail of where the burn area was. Um, this might be even better here. Okay, all around this region, Thousand Oak, Simi Valley, my old haunts from many years ago. Um, when I worked for Rockwell International, um, did research, laser research in Thousand Oaks uh, quite a few years ago. So this is, this is all the burn area here. Um, and you can keep going down and get all kinds of different images, more details and, and stuff like that. Okay, so this is a video that is the most surprising. NBC News video on the devastation. So let's have a, let's watch this video. So a car is going along a road. Now, let me stop it for a second. Well, well let's just see what's going on here. So there, look at these bull, okay. So there's, the first thing is there's all kinds of these big boulders. So this wasn't just a flash flood of water. This was a movement of water, of mud, and of rocks. Basically the top about 15 feet can give way and all of that comes down. The rocks just get pushed along, you know, transported large distances. So you can see the force of the, I mean, the force of moving water is huge. The, when you've got mud, it's much denser and then boulders and stuff. So, you know, it hits houses and basically it just sheared houses off. So this is the NBC video as they go along. Um, you know, total destruction. Um, you can see pieces of metal pushed against uh, things, doors, um, metal there on, on posts. 
you know, it just knocks the trees, pulls the trees out of the ground, you know, tremendous force. Okay, so this is about, a, I'm, I'm going to play the full extent of this, this video. Okay, look at the size of this, of this rock here. Tremendous force. You know, in the middle of the night just came down from that burst of rain on the slope. So, so there's a huge cascading of bad things happening when you get, when you get something like this occurring. Okay, there's a car or truck of some sort just buried half in the mud sticking out. You know, the, the mud just basically move, picks up and moves houses. Now, guess what this is? Guess what river this is? Or lake or whatever. This is the 101 freeway. Okay, this is an overpass. And this is the 101 free, freeway according to the NBC um, report. Okay. So what do we have when we have a flash flood? Well, you have heavy rain falling, the ground gets saturated. Uh, nope, go back. Stop. Okay, so the heavy rain saturates the ground. That means the ground can't hold any more water. It means like there's pores in the soil between the soil particles and the water can fill those pores that just saturate the ground. Ground can't hold any more water. Water runs down um, and gets channeled into valleys and stuff, causing a flash flood. Okay, many different causes. Heavy rain, hot, dry areas. The land is baked hard. You know, lots of sun, very hard ground. Water doesn't infiltrate much. You can get this water, you know, rushing. Snow melt, uh, deforestation. Get rid of the trees and the uh, roots and stuff and the soil is not held together. Vegetation is very good for stabilizing land surfaces. Urbanization, concrete and tarmac. There should be wildfires in here. It's not on this list. But here are some different geomorphic uh, features that, that we have. We can have fissures and land breaking down into these, uh, you know, th there's scarps and different slump areas here, you know, stepped, um, deranged forest. Okay, look at the trees are all different, different directions. Um, this is called the toe of uh, the extent of the landslide. You know, you can block rivers and stuff. Water can pond up. Um, you can have... Uh, different collapses here on steeper slopes and rock slides and debris flow here. So all kinds of different things. Now with wildfires, the susceptibility to debris flows and flash flooding is the highest within two years of the fire. And fires just happened about a month ago. You know, we're January 11th. They happened just over a month ago. Rainfall rates of even half an inch per hour can cause flash flooding over burn scars. However, steeper terrain and severity of damage increases the risk. Okay, so we saw 0.91 inches, you know, that was over three hours, so it was under this particular rate. You know, if you look uphill, you see a burned out area and it's raining, you're at risk. So this is a burn. So part of the soil can absorb the burnt surface. This is a water absorbing surface. You can absorb, some water can be absorbed in there. This is a water repellent. Now, so the water's just in there and then the whole thing can slide causing the debris flow. So the top, say 15 feet or so, all the boulders, everything in the ground can just flow down. And that's really kind of what we saw. I mean, this is a, this is a view of the 101 freeway. Um, there's all kinds of other images. I'm just go to Google images and, you know, Google, what did I, I, what did I do here in this case? way up here where we here we go okay california highway 101 and all these images came up where you can get more specific um this is a this is a, an la times uh image of some of the freeway being freeways being covered now i understand parts of the 101 are still closed they will be until monday and you can look at traffic flow google traffic flow here or look at the numbers this is cars per hour going each direction you see that not only you know we're 17 people killed there's people missing and there's huge disruption to